Hello, Leo listeners. Cara here from leolistening.com, where I help adventurous expats and intrepid travelers improve their English listening skills with movies and TV shows. So welcome to Watch Short Movies, Understand Fast Speech, which is a special summer series to help you understand fast-talking native English speakers with short films. So the short films that we're going to watch together and that I'm going to explain to you come from an experiment I did during lockdown where I ran a movie club And we had these watch parties where we watched short films together. And the students had a lot of questions about these movies. And there were some that were more difficult than others and some that were more useful than others in terms of being full of useful conversational expressions pronounced in a fast way. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going through those movies that were the the most difficult and also the most useful so that everybody can benefit from learning how to catch the useful conversational expressions in them and start using them. So please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And if you enjoy this method, then you can download the mini movie guide for more details on how to improve your English listening skills with movies. Go to the description and you'll find the link there. So let's get to the first movie in this series, Sock Down which is a short comedy horror about one man's mental breakdown during lockdown. So the title is a mixture of the words sock and lockdown, and you'll see why in just a second. So it's not just any man who has a mental breakdown. The writer, director and star of the movie is my cousin Mark, who created this film to raise money for the UK mental health charity Mind. So you can find the link to the full film in the description below. So I say full film, but it's a short movie. It lasts about six minutes or something like that. So what I recommend that you do first is watch the movie a couple of times and make a note of how much you understood as a percentage. So 0% is nothing and then 100% is everything. And then come back here to watch me take you through the film and explain what was difficult to catch. So as you'll see, the movie starts off with a typical lockdown day. So our hero takes a shower, be aware there's some brief nudity. And then he settles down at his desk for a day of working from home. So, so far, so normal. And then when his colleagues turn on their webcams, he discovers something strange. So I'll see you in a second to walk you through this short movie so that you understand everything. All right, see you then. Right then, let's get into watching Sock Down together. So I've selected some sections that were hard to catch, either because of the way they're pronounced or that because there's words that you probably don't know because they're very informal, or both. So let's have a look then. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the in the very long introduction um, is that uh, Mark is, uh, well, our whole family is Scottish and Mark has um, a much stronger accent than me. Um, So you'll probably, you probably noticed that when you, um, when you watched the the video, but just to give you um, an example here. Are your cameras working or is it just my connection? So you can, you can hear that um, he really, the R sounds are different, that, that definitely marks out the Scottish accent among among other things. So don't be surprised um, if you if you notice that or that made it a bit tricky to understand if you're not used to um, Scottish accents. And then Andy and Carol, the other characters, I would say they have sort of more southeast of England accents, which you might be a bit more um, familiar with. Anyway, so let's get into it then. Actually, speaking of Andy, he says something interesting at 53 seconds. So hopefully I've got the timing right here. I look minging. <laughs> so Andy says, I look mingin. So there's a couple of things going on here. So one is that um, I sounds more like a. So this is really common on I, the pronoun. We often reduce it to a. So we chop it from two sounds, I, into one, a. And then Andy uses this word minging. So he uh, reduces it a little bit. He says mingin, 
instead of minging, right? Um, but you're probably wondering what it means. And minging is basically a very informal British word meaning ugly. So if you say someone looks minging, it's pretty insulting. So be careful with that, with that word. All right, the next one is Andy as well. Can we just give it a miss? So Andy asks, can we just give it a miss? So if you give something a miss, you skip it. You don't do it. So he wants to not do the meeting for reasons that you've probably noticed. Um, something that comes up a lot uh, in the clip well, and in informal, fast-spoken English in general is the way people reduce the word just. So we use just a lot in in conversation as a kind of as a way to um, soften what we're saying. So Andy says, "Can we just give it a miss?" So instead of being really really direct and saying, "Can we give it a miss?" he adds the just to kind of soften the request because he he is asking for something um, that's a bit tricky to to request to you know skip a, a meeting. Um, and very often just it sounds more like just or even jis in fast speech, which can make it quite hard to catch. Right. As for today, we agreed that seeing each other plays a crucial role in communicating effectively. If we start compromising on this, I worry that we'll get into bad habits. And with everything that's going on right now, that's the last thing I want. Besides, seeing you guys makes me feel a little less lonely. Right, so that was a long, long monologue there from from Mark. Um, so he, the, the last part there is a bit reduced, a, li a little less lonely. So, um, so what happens there is that there's this reduction on on little. Um, so one of the features of the Scottish accent is that we use a lot of uh, glottal stops. So on a word like little, that's a typical example where we would reduce the t sounds and and replace them with a glottal stop. Although that does happen in 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 other in other accents as well. I'd rather not. Okay, again, Andy is a little tricky to understand. So he says, if I say it carefully, he says, I'd rather not. And when he says it fast, it sounds more like I'd rather not. So again, what's happening here is he's reducing the pronoun I and this is interesting as well. So you probably spent a lot of time at school learning how to pronounce the uh, the th sound, like in the, uh, carefully. But in fact, most most of the time, I'm not sure if it's most of the time, but very often native speakers don't bother pronouncing this carefully in conversation. So they will replace it with another sound. So in this case, Andy uses a v, rather, I'd rather not. I would also say that's probably quite a common thing in his particular accent. And not, again, that's another example where we often um, drop the T at the end. I'd rather not. Okay. Same. Okay, I'm going to count to three. And if I don't see you, I'm going to have to escalate. All right, there's a lot to say about uh, Mark's previous uh, sentence, if you like. So uh, so he kind of threatens his colleagues by saying, I'm going to, to count to three. So this bit is quite reduced. So he says, I'm, I'm going to count to three. So I'm sounds more like am. We've got the famous gonna instead of going to. Count loses uh, the T sound at the end. And instead of saying two, three, count as in count two, three, he says to. To, so that two gets gets reduced, um, and if I don't see you, so and loses the G sound at the end. If a is if and I, I as you know is reduced to a. If a they join together, don't without the the T at the end. See you. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna have to to escalate. So again that. To that preposition gets reduced to to. Um, I actually had to check the meaning of escalate in this context. So in a work context, it means that you go to the next level of management. So es essentially what he's saying is, if you don't turn on your cameras, 
I'm going to take this to um, my boss and tell them that you you didn't comply with my with my request. Okay, let's skip ahead a little bit because if you've watched the movie, you'll know what comes next. I need to get to Andy. Oh. It's us. Hey, can you turn that up? Listen to this. Flooding in from oh, um, I did it. It was too soon. Or too late, rather. Carol? Oh, thank God. I thought I was the only one. What is happening? So Andy says, I thought I was the only one. So again, instead of pronouncing the th, the, the sort of th sound on thought, he reduces it to f. I thought I was the only one. To us? Guys, we're puppets. But how? Beats me. Hey! Uh, that's a nice expression. Andy says, beats me, or beats, beats me, without the, the t at the end. So that's an informal expression that means, I don't know. I don't know why this is the case, or I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I think that, that cut a little bit. Mark uses another nice in informal expression. Hey, pack it in. Oh. Pack it in. <laughs> so, pack it in, or pack it in, when we say it fast and we link uh, the first two words and we drop the T on, it means stop that and that's a really informal expression and it's the kind of expression you use when you're a bit annoyed with someone you know when you're shouting at your kids to stop them doing something that they shouldn't do no what to say mark okay um that's a classic fast expression so instead of saying i don't know and he says i don't know I don't know so that with that reduced i sound and then that informal contraction don't know Okay. Mark, how come you're still you? All right, this is interesting. So Andy says, Andy asks Mark, how come you're still you? So how come is a nice expression. It's an informal way to say why. So why are you not a sock puppet? And um, Andy drops the H on how, which is interesting. That does happen in some accents of English. We do, uh, people do drop H's on, on certain words that normally wouldn't lose their H. So it sounds like I'll come, I'll come. All right, let's skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so Mark shouts, go away, uh, so go away, it's a phrasal verb meaning, you know, leave, um, get out, go, go, go from here, leave me alone. Okay, so we don't hear it very well, but one of the other socks outside asks him, you okay, mate? So, um, actually, let me just skip back to the part where we see the socks walking around outside. Okay, so it's those socks <laughs> that, that shout through the, the window, you okay, mate? So this is interesting. So mate is a, an informal word in British English to mean friend. But obviously, in this case, the socks outside and Mark, they don't know each other. They're not friends. Um, but another way that, that people use mate in the UK is to address other men. So it's quite common for somebody to say mate to you, even if they're not your friend. They're just being friendly. It's just a way to be polite and friendly. Um, okay, let's skip ahead. Okay, that, well, that one was hard to catch because we've got all this background noise. Um, the sock says, why don't you come and open the door? What's a little tricky there in the middle is the linking between come and, which is reduced to an, and open. <laughs> come and open, come and open. Okay, so we covered Mark shouting. 
at the socks to go away. I'm coping. All right, that's an interesting question. How, so the sock asks, <laughs> how are you coping? Um, so already that question, you could argue there's a, a grammar mistake because it should be, how are you coping? Um, although when we speak very fast, we do reduce those auxiliary verbs and sometimes we even delete them. So how are you coping means, how are you managing? Okay, I guess. So Mark's reply, okay, I guess. That's an informal way to say, I suppose, or I think. All right, let's skip to the end of their conversation. Well, at least we're in it together. I'm... Okay, so the sock on the left says, well, at least we're in it together. So we've got some nice linking there. We're in it. So, um, yeah, there's links between those three words. We're in it together. That's interesting because that was kind of an, a, a, a big kind of theme or slogan or even a meme during the lockdown was this idea of, all being in it together, meaning that we're all concerned, we're all affected, we're all stuck at home. Sure, they'll figure it out. Okay, we've got another nice example of linking there. I'm sure they'll figure it out, figure it out. So if you figure something out, you solve a problem. Okay, figure it out. And again, that T sound missing uh, at the end. It's for stopping. Bye bye now. Okay, so Mark says to them, thanks for stopping by. So when you stop by somewhere, you go somewhere on the way to somewhere else. So for example, you might say to a friend, I'll stop by your house on the way to work to give you back that book you lent me. So you're on your way to work and you stop by the person's house on, on the way. That's kind of like a... a an intermediary step on your on your journey. Okay, uh, and let's go back then to the final Zoom call. Morning. Hey. How's it going? Okay, so Mark is has become a sock, or at least he's trying to look like a sock. And Andy asks, "How's it going?" So that's just an informal way to say, how are you? All right, that brings us to the end of the analysis of socked down. So I hope you've learned some useful expressions and I hope you'll be able to pick them up more easily when you listen to fast spoken English. All right, see you soon for another Understand Fast English with Short Movies video very soon. Make sure you've subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss them. And you can grab your mini movie guide for free under this video if you've enjoyed this method and you want to know more about improving your listening skills with movies. All right, bye for now.